Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 film, The Mortuary Collection. It is a Shudder original and it's coming to Shudder on Thursday, October 15th. So when I'm releasing this review, it is before it hits Shudder. So for that reason, it will be a no spoiler review. Now that said, it plays both ways. You know, you could watch this having already watched the film and it'll mean a little extra to you. You could watch this without having watched it, and I'm not really going to spoil anything, although I do talk about a few thematic type things in it, but it definitely won't ruin any of the events of the film. I'm just going to tell you that. Now, that said, where I am when I was coming into this film, I'm, I'm recording this on October 2nd, and I watched some horror films on October 1st because I'm like, all right, I'm going to get in the mood. It's October. I'm excited because I'm always excited for October. And I watched a few films and I was like, I'm just not like feeling into the spirit yet. After watching The Mortuary Collection, fixed all of that. It totally feels like October. It feels like Halloween. It just, they create that atmosphere in such an amazing way. And that's one of the big things about the film is it looks so good. All the technical stuff is outstanding in this film. It, the directing is outstanding. The cinematography is outstanding. The acting, for the most part, is so good. The script writing is really good. And the dialogue feels realistic in the film. The music usage is spot on with this. And if you've watched enough of my reviews, you know that I tend to jump on films that kind of use music that's too grandiose, that kind of detracts from what's going on. Now, they go grandiose with the music in this, but it ends up really working and doesn't take me out of the actual events of the film, which which I found kind of odd for me personally, but it was a great thing. Um, and it kind of it, it oscillates between this, this spectrum of being kind of like upbeat and fun music and then going all the way to like terrifying and dark music, and it, and it moves throughout, and that's really nice because there is some fun to be had with this film in addition to the, you know, the scares. Now, I would say this is one of these uh, Shutter originals that you have to have to see. Do not miss this one, and especially watch this in October. It is totally worth it. Like I said, it feels like Halloween. It feels like October this time of year. Watch it in the dark as well. That'll just enhance things even more. I didn't watch it in the dark, but now I really want to rewatch it in the dark. Now, uh, this is written and directed by Ryan Spindell, who uh, really the only thing I found in his IMDb worth talking about is He'll have a episode he directs of Fifty Shades of Fright coming up, which I don't know what that's going to be on, but I've heard about this thing coming. Um, Clancy Brown is in this film, and he is... I, there's a lot of things I like about this film, but he is by far my favorite part of this film. Clancy Brown is amazing. If you're not familiar with him, he's been in uh, Carnival, which is my favorite role of his. I love that show on HBO. Totally underrated and a wonderful film, and he's great in it. He's also been in Highlander, Pet Cemetery 2, Shawshank Redemption, Starship Troopers, The Burrowers, John Dies at the End, Hellbenders, and a movie that is also underrated and little known, Little Evil, that's on Netflix. It's a Netflix original, and it's a horror comedy, and it's really well done. Uh, one of the guys, I think the director who did Tucker and Dale vs. Evil did that, so I highly recommend that. I'll do a review on it at some point, but... So anyway, so Clancy Brown in this plays the character of Montgomery Dark. And the kind of overall synopsis of this, it's an anthology film. And it has four stories. And then the fifth story is kind of like the wraparound story that brings everything together. And that's the story of Clancy Brown's character, Montgomery Dark. Now, Montgomery Dark runs a mortuary. And a woman comes and kind of uh, implies uh, or asks him about a uh, help wanted sign that he has basically saying I, I would like to work here so when th that starts it up to kind of have an exchange of stories you know she's kind of asking Montgomery Dark for stories so that's where the anthology portion comes in and you get all these stories and it kind of progresses from there now that said the wraparound story with Montgomery Dark and this woman still has a point to it it is a story of its own a lot of the times with anthology films that wraparound will just be really seem it ha like it has no consequence. It'll just be kind of for no point. It'll like loosely tie things together. But this is not that. This is actually a very important part of the overall film. So trust me, it's worth it. There's a payoff in the end. So Clancy Brown in this as Montgomery Dark makes uh, feels a lot like Angus Scrim in the role of the tall man in Phantasm in many, many ways. And he is phenomenal. I love this character. I need more of this character. After watching this film, I was like, 
I am like crossing my fingers for a Mortuary Collections Part Two or second volume or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it, it it's cool, and I love Clancy Brown in this. He just like chews up the scenery. He he steals every moment that he's in with this. Um, he's great. So the way this actually starts, uh, really cool camera work, really cool music, really engages you immediately. It kind of shows this town that feels like Halloween, basically. There's a lot of fog throughout it, and that carries throughout the entire film, really, which helps because it's a very cohesive environment and atmosphere that is there from the very beginning of the film, and it sticks all the way through to the end. And I think that's one of the reasons it's so perfect for watching on Halloween, is that it feels immersive and it never breaks from that. And it's so Halloween, it's so October, so yeah. Uh, but with the music that they have in the very beginning of this, it makes it feel very grand, very epic. Uh, but it works, it works very well. Typically that type of music, I'm a little taken aback by it, I'm like, eh, but uh, it's good. Uh, it really works. So the intro in this, they you end up seeing a bunch of things that kind of let you know that there are a lot of stories in this town that kind of opens it up to there, there's, there's a plethora of stories. Which ones are we going to end up getting? And if you go back after you finish the film and you think back or you actually go back, you'll see that there were hints of all the stories that were actually told. There were portions of it shown up front as there's kind of this adventure through the town initially to get to the mortuary. So that's a really cool, interesting thing. And it also kind of sets it up for there could be more of these films. So yeah. So I'm going to give you some synopses of the individual stories that they tell. Very, very brief, obviously, because I don't want to give anything away. And they're short, so they're, I can't give a whole lot. So the first story is about a woman who uh, secludes herself in a bathroom. She's not a very good person. Uh, you'll see why. And then something weird starts to happen in a bathroom. And that's basically all I can say without spoiling anything, because it's a very short one. Now, it's a little bit slow, especially for how short it is, but it does keep your interest because there's kind of this mystery aspect of where are they going? What are they trying to get to with this film? What What's going to happen? So there's good enough tension that really keeps you involved. Now, in the end, the story is kind of about karma, and that's one of the things that I kind of want to talk about with all the stories is, for the most part, they're all very kind of basic morality uh, lessons in a sense. So it kind of takes it back to traditional, typical horror storytelling. Now, that's important to the actual film overall because it uses that to a degree to talk about storytelling in general. And I'll talk a little bit more about that without spoilers like at the end of this review. So I'll, I'll circle back to that one. So the sec second story is basically about a guy at college, a frat guy at college who has one thing on his mind. You can probably, you know, guess what that one thing is. And he has a party. He meets a girl. Things don't go so great. And that's where I'll leave it. Uh, it leads with some decent comedy to it. This is the one that probably has the most comedic aspect to it, and is good comedy. It's well written. Like I said, with the writing, the dialogue is realistically written with this, so good on that. Uh, because of early events, it kind it, uh, it's kind of easy to see where the film is actually going. You really can guess where it's going, just like um, the first one, I don't think you can as much. You, you might have some inklings. The third story, I think you could definitely guess where it's going. The fourth story, I was able to guess where it was going, but the wraparound story, I was not. And that kind of changes a lot about the film in general. So, But anyway, I'm still on the second story. So you can really see where it's going. It's not a huge surprise. Some people may not, though. I don't know. There's a short montage in this that's kind of like, it, it feels like it doesn't really work. I understand what they were trying to do, but it was very unnecessary this story feels a little bit long for what the content really is, and that montage in particular really just didn't need to be there. It didn't add anything, uh, so that should have been cut out. The other thing is this film is actually an hour and 50 minutes, basically, so it's a little bit long for a horror film, so certain things like that montage and the second story should have just been cut, in my opinion, but not a big deal. Uh, this is a story about being careful and also being respectful of others, while using a social role reversal to kind of illustrate it. And that's actually something that comes up in this film quite a bit, is the idea of kind of role reversal and what you expect versus what you end up getting and looking at things 
from the flipped perspective in a way. So think about that while you're watching it. Uh, there's something shown in, in the the end of this uh, particular story that I did not think they would end up showing. I was very shocked that they actually showed it, but I liked that they did because it was kind of funny to me and also cr like gruesome, gory. So um, that was a good payoff. I, I was not expecting that one. All right, so story three, this one's basically about a man who's in a marriage and his wife is kind of like in a catatonic state almost. And he needs to take care of her. And then horror, it's a progression. I, I won't go further than that. So this one is definitely slow. But one of the things is the nature of the actual story, because of what it is, you kind of can't avoid that. It kind of needs to be told in a slow way because it makes the events and the tension and where everything goes feel more realistic and natural. So... Just know that you kind of have to stick with it, but it's worth it. It is definitely worth it. And that is another one where you could probably see where it's going. Most likely I did. And it kind of felt in ways similar, uh, especially at the end of it, to a creep show episode uh, of the original Shutter series creep show. Um, so you'll see what I mean when you watch it. It does do a good job of creating some conflicting feelings with what's actually happening. You understand what's going on from a few different perspectives. Now, this is kind of that role reversal thing that I was talking about looking at things from a flip side. Uh, and that works with the story because you feel conflicted. There's a good gradual escalation of events. Like I was saying, that's why it's kind of slow. Uh, and this one kind of seems to be a meditation on relationships and kind of the, the tough situation of feeling trapped either physically trapped in a, situ in a situation or relationship, but also kind of emotionally and obligationally trapped. Um, and kind of what are your options at that point? Uh, it has a pretty cool visual sequence towards the end. I really did enjoy that. It might seem like it's a little bit long, but it is so visually cool and appealing that, um, yeah, it's nice. And, and it has an actual kind of emotional appeal during that visual uh, display. So I, I did like it. Now, the, the fourth story actually kind of bleeds into the finale of the film and the wraparound story, so it's a pretty important one. Um, there's a gruesome part of this that actually may make people cringe. I will say that up front before I give you the kind of synopsis of it. But basically, the synopsis of this one is, it is about a babysitter who is taking care of a kid, and there's a news report that the mental uh, someone has escaped from the mental asylum and that's as far as I will go with that and then you'll see what happens now like I said there's a part in this that's gruesome that may make people cringe I wasn't quite there but uh, I I could you know recognize that the music and uh, some of the slow motion that's actually used in this one actually does go a little bit too over the top I think that they tried to get a little too stylistic with this particular sequence of events in the story and it feels like a little much they kind of should have pulled this one back a bit uh but it doesn't kill the whole story so that's fine uh the story seems kind of boring until the end which then carries over to the wraparound story so that's kind of important in a way uh throughout the film for you to feel with the first four stories that you kind of are like, okay, you know, these seem, these feel kind of familiar. They're not super new or anything. And then things, you know, there's a point made about that. And it, it plays into the overall aspect of what the film is going for. So trust me, it's worth it. Um, so here are some end, end ideas on this one. The entire film has a great aesthetic. It looks phenomenal. Uh, it's dark, but it also looks very clean at the same time. Directing and cinematography is great. Like I said, the acting is quite good for the most part. Clancy Brown being the brightest spot, and I want more of his character. Uh, they create such an immersive atmosphere that they never end up leaving, which I love. Uh, the script is well done, and the dialogue feels supernatural. Um, oh, and going back to the, the look of it, it kind of feels like a mixture between like a Tim Burton film and how... Um, Series of Unfortunate Events. Let me snick at Series of Unfortunate Events. If you fuse Tim Burton and that film together, that's kind of the, the visual aspect that it looks like, which is very appealing for me personally. Um, I already talked about the music. 
the film gets very meta. It gets very meta. Uh, it comments on itself and its storytelling and uses that to lead the audience on a very intentional path while making points about storytelling in general and audience expectations of that art form in present day. So there is a much deeper point to this overall film. Look out for that. This is a film I can see myself watching again. And on Halloween, like I recommended at the beginning. It just really does have that feel. Now, every Halloween, I before I go to bed, I always watch Trick or Treat, which is another anthology film that's really well put together. So I think I might put The Mortuary Collection as a double feature with that film. Now, put that one first because I like Trick or Treat even more. I think Trick or Treat's a better film, but The Mortuary Collection may become a part of my regular October routine, maybe specifically my regular Halloween routine, because I really do enjoy it. Now, that said, it is not perfection. It is not perfect, but it is really good. Uh, it's a little bit too long. There are a few kind of stylistic things that were a little over the top. Um, some people may not like how straightforward some of it is, but not all of it, so don't worry. But overall, when you get to the very end of it, I think it really pays off. And like I said, the biggest one of the biggest things with this is the atmosphere and Clancy Brown's character, his acting. Awesome. I need more of this. I need a second Mortuary Collection. Now that said, I'm going to go ahead and give you my overall rating. Uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a very good four-star rating. I was between four and four and a half, but I think it's more on the four end. If I was giving quarters, it would definitely be a 4.25, but four-star rating. This one should not be missed. Shame on you if you decide to pass on it. You gotta see it. And that said, I want comments. I want people, and go ahead, spoilers in the comments. Just know that. Spoilers in the comments, people. This is where we're going to talk about it. I want to hear from you. What did you think of this film? Um, it's okay if you didn't like it, you know, as excited as I am about it, I, I realize, you know, not every film is for everyone, so you can go ahead and bash it if you want to, if you didn't actually like it, but I'm hoping to hear a lot of people giving the thumbs up on it, so it's delight, it's pretty delightful, I enjoyed it, and I look forward to showing it to people and recommending it, so, um, Ryan Spindell, good job, buddy, real good job, man, anyway, thanks for checking this out, like I said, comments, um, Put likes on my videos if you can, do, but do me the big favor. Hit that subscribe button. That is the biggest thing. That's your way to repay me if you like any reviews that I do because um, I'm not you know, making money doing this or anything. I'm just I'm doing it out of the motivation of the subscribers. So every time I get a new subscriber, it drives me even more and keeps me going, basically. It keeps me energized. So I'd appreciate that. But if you are going to do that, make sure you also hit the notification bell. And that'll let you know whenever a new video goes up or when I'm live streaming or anything like that. So regardless, thanks for taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.